yourself comfortable? <laughs> okay, there was Don. Um, we'll we'll start again. I just want to make a quick announcement. On March the twenty seventh, at two thirty in the afternoon, there's going to be a uh, lecture from workshop. So for those who are interested and want to uh, come back and see Dan, uh, we have a, a further series of lectures. And it'll be a, a lecture workshop type plan of things, and it will happen on uh, Sunday on Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, Sunday afternoon at 2:30 on March 27th. So, if you're interested in that, make a note in your diary. Make a note in your diary. Find out these flyers relating to it, because they will be coming out possibly um, about a week or a week and a half before the event. Um, and it will be at this location, so you know where it is now. Do we want to do it? Not necessarily, unless we have an enormous turnaround to speak. So. But at the moment, no, it's not. Just uh, you know, keep it in mind, uh, keep in mind where it is, so you need to get the time to get it. All right, back to you, Dan. <laughs> there was a question during the intermission uh, asked about what this has to do with surviving the galactic alignment in 2012 and the compression, sometimes called the rapture, etc. And I just thought it would introduce our session on fusion and alchemy and black holes a little bit. We're going to do a romantic story about Shakespeare and alchemy in one minute. Um, so to understand the principle that implosive compression is how we survive, I'd like to use the metaphor of the tornado. Notice how tornadoes sometimes arrange themselves in a pentagram, but if you look at really big tornadoes, if you zoom in the center of a very large tornado, frequently you see this pent geometry. In fact, some of the most famous of tornadoes, the Katrina tornado, I believe this is Katrina, but do you see what this is? That's a pentagram. It's a very large tornado, and the center is a pentagram. It's implosively collapsing. Now, one of the things we know about tornadoes is they appear to have the ability to go out of their way to destroy a metal building. However, the tornado will also go out of its way to avoid destroying a sacred stone temple. It's very commonly known, actually. So the, the apparent physics seems to be that uh, the implosion that's happening at the center of the tornado that's making it centripetal and therefore self-organizing relates to the fact that this generates golden ratio. And that also creates a connection uh, with the center core of all plasma, all living charge, which you could think of as DNA radio, the collective unconscious, mindfulness, whatever you want to call it. So the way a shaman embeds and steers a tornado is to take the plasma field of the shaman, and he's there, and here comes the tornado, and he says, I feel your pain, I feel your pain, I feel your pain. And pretty soon the shaman finds his body, his aura, his plasma, embedded in the center of the tornado, feeling the tornado's body like it's his own body. That's a fusion of plasma. The aura of the tornado becomes centripetal to the aura of the tornado, creating a oneness experience. This is how you experience oneness with another person when you're having Tantra, for example. So this is an introduction to what we're going to talk about later, which is how you create group mind experience which is the definition of Shakespeare if you talk to advanced literary criticism. That Shakespeare was writing about the psychology of alchemy, which is to say how you have a group mind experience. That's the definition of Shakespeare if you're studying advanced literature, actually. So we're going to tell a little story at the end of this now about Shakespeare and alchemy. It's a fun story. But the reason I'm bringing this up here in response to your question, which was, here comes the tornado. I mean, here comes the solar wind. I mean, here comes the galactic wind. I mean, here comes the rapture. Those are all compression events. Those compression events mean that you need to get fractal or get dead. Oh, that's my bumper sticker. Excuse me. <laughs> what, 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 it mean, what it means is if the magnetic map of your bed and your house and your garden and your city 
If they look like a rose, then probably you're not going to have a problem. However, if the magnetic map of your city looks like a bunch of square metal lines, then probably you are going to have a problem. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you now an example of a magnetic map of a city that is a rose, and this city probably is not going to have a problem. This is Bohemia. This is Prague. This is the original magnetic map of Bohemia and Prague. And it is a rose. This is a structure that will invite compression. Do you know that famous series of books among the fundamentalist Christians called The Left Behind? When the rapture comes, you do not want to be left behind. Well, as an electrical engineer, I am telling you that if you do not want to be the left behind, you need to inhabit a rose. Any questions? It, it, in practice, it means the magnetic map of your bed has to be centripetal. It means eliminate the steel and aluminum, do a magnetic map, learn how to douse, and when the magnetic map of your bedroom looks like a rose, you're going to dream well, and that means you're going to die well. Okay? Same thing with your garden and your house and your city. And that is an introduction to the only physics of geomancy, feng shui, and architecture. So the deep science here, the other book we were discussing during the break, Seeds of Plenty, St uh, Seed of Knowledge, Stone of Plenty, excellent book. Very good science to prove that the seeds at Stonehenge grow faster. It's not complicated. If you plant seeds in the center of a, a dolmen circle, paramagnetic stone, they simply grow better. It's not a complicated experiment. So the seed growth that a stone circle creates is an electric field that effectively eliminates aging. <laughs> The ancient term for that was a Shem. So in the Bible, the ancient one said, I will build a Shem unto the Lord. And that word Shem, which became our word schema, schematic, chem, alchemy, chemistry, which we now know means how to access a black hole. Okay, chem, the word chem and al was the original name for Egypt, chem, because Enki... Hermes' blood was blue-black, so it was called the city of Chem. The Nile River Delta is a long story. So the word Chem, which in our translation from the Bible was translated the altar in church. So if you study it carefully, to make an altar in the church is to build a Shem. And a Shem is a kind of electric field that causes a seed to grow. And that's called a fractal field. It turns out that you can build a fractal field. It's called a phase conjugate dielectric. So those of you who are sensitive, when you hold a phase conjugate dielectric, it's a trace mineral ceramic that if it's done right will eliminate electrosmog and reduce radioactivity because it's centripetal, which is the function of the Ark of the Covenant capacitor. So when you hold a phase conjugating dielectric, try this, do it gently, hold it, Move this slowly parallel to your ear. Some of you tried this last couple weeks ago. Or try this too, very slowly. If you're sensitive, you will feel metabolic acceleration. You will feel a tingle, a charge, a presence. If you've had bliss experience, you're more likely to have that experience. So it's, what you're experiencing is the compression or implosion of charged fields, which defines attention, and it's the physics of why kings wear gold crowns. So this is an introduction to the physics of what the Ark of the Covenant was. It's an electric field that prevents death, <laughs> causes immortality, whatever you want to call it. It's a bioactive electric field because a fractal field causes 